Thank you for joining us in Finding God in the World of Video Games. And this year, as we headed into the E3 event, almost every major publisher lined up their respective heavy hitters, getting ready for big trailers, and demos, and sizzle reels, or at least, you know, maybe an announcement reveal. But Sony, as they like to do, decided they wouldn't wait until E3 and crashed the party early and revealed a sizable chunk of the highly anticipated sequel to the smash hit Horizon Zero Dawn, Horizon 2, Forbidden West. And this title seems to be checking all the boxes one could wish for in a sequel to this Game of the Year winner. New and interesting areas to explore, improvements to the excellent traversal and battle systems, and massive upgrades to an already graphically amazing game. But there's one area that may be more critical to the success of this game than any of the other enhancements. And it's not a technical one. It's the ability for both PS4 and PS5 owners to be able to continue the adventures of Aloy on their respective consoles. Which is good, because, you know, we don't have a PS5 yet. Not so like yet. That. Not yet. Every time. Eventually. <laughs> Eventually. Hopefully, you know, when they come in stock. Yes, yeah, so when we see one in the wild running around, we'll try to capture it, like, <laughs> with a Pokeball or something. <laughs> that would be cool. But it's no secret that PS5 console is in scarce supply and high demand. And even though we do not have an exact release date for this PlayStation exclusive, it is certain that when it launches, the PS5 will still be difficult to acquire. I think you pronounced that wrong. It's not difficult. Impossible. I was going to say, did I really word. mispronounce it? No. no. <laughs> I was like, how do you mispronounce difficult? Yeah. I think you would find that. I probably would too. <laughs> but this places the developer in a bit of a bind. You know, do you allocate all of your resources to developing a PS5 title that will deliver the next generation experience fans are looking for? Or do you split your focus to ensure that the widest base of fans are able to purchase your game, including those who have not yet managed to upgrade to the next console? Like us, you know. I'd appreciate that. <laughs> you know, both of those options carry considerable risk. I mean, on one hand, when you deliver a AAA title and it utilizes the full power of the PS5, that's that's already a major challenge, and that will take considerable effort for even the best developer to achieve. And if they focus on only the PS5, they will be able to ensure that the game is flawlessly executed on that platform. But, as we mentioned, there's a very low amount of current PS5 systems on the market, so delivering this game across both PS5 and PS4 will provide an opportunity for the largest possible audience at the risk of offering maybe a watered-down or perhaps broken version of one or both. I mean, I know that it may be too soon to mention this, but the cautionary tale of the nightmarish release that was Cyberpunk 2077 clearly demonstrated the challenges of trying to make current and next-gen console owners both happy. And instead, they made them all very, very that miserable. That was just a train wreck. <laughs> that was just a trade. That was awful. But having a foot planted firmly in both worlds is a challenge many game designers are dealing with right now. And it is a struggle that we face as believers each and every day as well. I mean, most of us are probably at least somewhat familiar with the popular praise in the world but not of it and that was inspired from words that were spoken by christ during his final prayer session prior to his crucifixion we'll show you that in john 17 15 through 19 this is jesus praying he says i don't pray that you should take them out of the world you should keep them from the evil one they are not of the world just as i am not of the world sanctify them by your truth your word is truth as you sent me into the world i have also sent them into the world for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they may also be sanctified by the truth. If we have chosen to follow Christ, we have selected a new path in life, one that frequently runs counter to the cultural norms that surround us. You know, think about it. Biblical concept, concepts like, you know, the last will be first, real popular in the snack of the woods, love your enemies. A little challenging. Mm. Turn the other cheek. Some of these can seem downright counterintuitive. And submitting to our Creator's will and following the teachings of Christ, not exactly the most popular choice most of us make in our day to day lives. But making this choice is only step one of following 
in the footsteps of the Lord. We have a great commission to fulfill, and considering that these are some of the final recorded words of Christ, they are kind of a big deal. Now, we're clearly called to reach others with the message of hope that can only be found in Christ by remaining close enough to be relatable and relevant, but still keeping ourselves unspotted from this world. The struggle is real, but fortunately, so are the answers. So let's start with the actual Greek word that was used when Christ said, they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. The word used here is the same in both spots. This word, it's E-K here, it means from out, out from among, from, suggesting from the interior outwards. This is the same of that is used in all those famous begatting verses. Now, I know I can see you looking at, what do you mean begatting? As you know, like in Matthew 1, when Abraham begat Isaac, Isaac begat Jacob, Jacob begat Judah, and begat, begat, and all these people just begatting all over the place. I mostly just skip that. <laughs> it's just a lot. I'm missing out on all the begat. It's just too much. So the word of, that is in all of those, obviously, when it says Salmon begat Boaz of Rahab. Boaz begot Obed of Ruth. You know, in both of those, it's speaking about the mother. The word of here is referring to the child that was being birthed, most notably who they're being birthed from. You see that? We got Obed of Ruth. As believers in Christ, we have been born again. You see that in John 3.3 3, when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. He says, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom we have a new lineage from our Heavenly Father. We belong to a new family. That's what born again means. But we do still have friends and family and a multitude of people that we haven't met yet. They are still of this world. They have not been reborn into this new life. Not yet. So just as a PS5 can play games that are you know, designed for both PlayStation and PS5, PlayStation 4 and PS5. Of Otherwise known as the only PlayStation we have. <laughs> I almost missed the 4 part. <laughs> we have the ability to communicate directly with the Lord while still speaking the native language of those who have not yet upgraded. But PS5 games do not play on PS4 because we the tried hardware... it, it doesn't work. <laughs> we have not tried. <laughs> That'd be such a waste of money. 70 bucks. It's, don't even That's a different article. <laughs> it's, it's a different article for a different day. Um, PS4 because the hardware cannot run them. And similarly, those who have not yet chosen to experience the next gen upgrade simply cannot process the new priorities and specifications of following Christ. So that leaves it to us. Me, you, we are the bridge for these souls, the human connective tissue that connects followers of a dying platform onto a new foundation. We are the software that is able to run on both platforms. And in order to fulfill the Great Commission, we must be fully accessible to all we come in contact with without compromising the integrity of what we've been developed for. We belong to a new kingdom. We're part of a new family. And that family plays by different rules, rules of love and service and sacrifice. There remains only one way to heaven, and there are requirements to remaining in right standing with the Lord. We have not been called to hide away in the mountains and send out letters to people about our faith in Christ. That just wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> we were told to go into the world share this good news. Just as Christ remained firmly grounded in the soil of this planet, and he used relatable stories to talk to the people he was trying to reach, like planting, or being a shepherd, or fishing, even house cleaning. Not my favorite particular lesson that he's teaching, but I get it. And just as he did that, we are also called to bring the truth of the Lord to those who we meet through the same commonalities we all face in life. Nobody said that this would be easy. As we grow in our walk with Christ, our personal convictions will make less room for the things of this world, so we have more room for the Lord in our lives. 
the Spirit of God will continue to convict us of things that are not compatible with our new hardware and need to be left behind. Just as developers have begun making games specifically for the PS5 architecture, these future games will have less and less in common with our PS4 hardware. But if we want to continue to connect with those who have not yet committed their lives to Christ, we must intentionally reach our arms back along the connection points that we continue to have in common, not in the selfish, worldly pursuits that we've left behind, but the common desires to be loved, to be valued, to be accepted, and to have a feeling of purpose. Backwards compatibility in video games is not simple. It requires constant firmware updates and the willingness to develop games that can meet the core needs of both audiences without sacrificing the standards of the new hardware. The designers of Horizon 2 have made the commitment to ensure that they don't leave anyone behind on this title while still remaining true to the vision of what the PS5 can do. And let's keep it real. That means it is going to take longer. It's going to be more costly. And it's going to open them up to critics from both sides of the aisle. And if we're going to fulfill our commitment to the Lord, we must be prepared for that same level of challenge. We cannot dumb down what we have been designed for. That defeats the purpose of the new birth in the first place. We have a higher calling now, and we must fulfill that destiny and the new convictions that it does involve. But we cannot leave our brothers and sisters behind in this process of moving forward. For their sake, we must keep one foot on this planet while stepping our other foot towards heaven. We remain, you know, in this world, and we are expected to not only inhabit it, but to grow the kingdom while we're in it. But we are no longer of this world because we belong to Christ. We're not PS4 games trying to play on a PS5. We are PS5 games that are making the intentional effort to reach out to those who are still on a PS4 and show them that through our common battles, we have found a better way. We don't share in their sins. We share in their struggles, their pain, and we share in their journey. We don't lower our standards in an attempt to be you know, relatable. We lower our guard and allow them to see the humanity that still resides in us and how the Spirit of God carries us through our weaknesses by His strength. As, you know, if Paul did this better than anybody, he demonstrated to us that we're not free to live a life of freedom from Christ but freedom in Christ for the purposes of reaching others for Christ. You see that in 1 Corinthians 9. He says, Though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all of them, that I might win the more. To the Jews, I became as a Jew, so that I could win the Jews. To those under the law, as under the law myself, that I could win those who are under the law. To those who don't have the law, I became as one without the law, not being without the law toward God, but under law towards Christ, that I might win those who are without law. To the weak, I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And that I do for the gospel's sake, so that I can be a partaker of it with you. This is what it means to be in the world, but not of it to openly love the Lord and seek his kingdom, while also opening ourselves up to those who still have both feet planted in this world. I, for one, am excited that the continuing adventures of Aloy will be accessible to the entire PS4 and PS5 community, because she is a protagonist who deserves for her story to be played by as many people as possible. And similarly, the message of Christ must also be relatable and meet people wherever they are at. And that is where we come in. Not with an inferior version of the message of Christ. Nobody on a PS4 or a PS5 wants to play a broken game, a shallow game, no. or a meaningless game. We must reach with a powerful, life-changing, uncompromising message that provides strength and purpose in the storm, during the rain, and through the pain. Let's be the access point that bridges the gap and ensure that nobody we come into contact with is left 